On the morning of November 17th, Mike Reed heads into the deepest part of his farm, the central timber, right in the middle of the core area of his top target buck, Curly. Well, it's Saturday, November 17th, and uh, we're just before a winter uh, precipitation event. <laughs> we're supposed to get some rain slash sleet slash snow here by around 10 o'clock, so actually did a hanging hunt this morning. We came on the uh, south side of my central timber where Curly is. This is Curly's main core area and he's the buck. I've been hunting now for a few weeks and we had that one encounter with him about 10 days ago. And so I'm hoping he's uh, somewhere in here and either be cruising around looking for another doe or I'd, if he's with the doe, she drags him by us. Hopefully this front pushing through has a deer on their feet we're gonna sit here for a few hours and hopefully Curly shows up. That's the buck we're in here after. That's the buck I call Curly. All of his tines kind of curl in, so that's a deer I've got three years of history with, and it's our second encounter with him. As I was mentioning earlier, this is his, his core area. I've got pictures of him all around this, this central sanctuary. And uh, he's locked down with the doe, of course. And uh, he's been right there for nearly 30 minutes. And there was another doe and a couple other small bucks, and they haven't moved very much, but they just worked over the hill there. We're gonna sit here for a while longer, and if we get lucky, she'll, she'll drag him by us. Mike's morning hunt ends without further excitement. With snow in the forecast, 150 miles to the west, Owen Riegler heads to a redneck blind near a food source. This new spot offers Owen a welcome change of scenery after hunting Uno non-stop for the better part of a week. I don't know what it is about these conditions, guys, but I just love hunting in the snow and wind and cold. Maybe it's from being from Michigan where we hunted in the snow a lot. I don't know, but I sure love it. Used to just sit, of course, before I could ever even afford to own a blind, I used to sit in tree stands in just crazy cold weather and snow. And uh, it's kind of nice to get in a redneck blind now, though. I'm not gonna make up any stories. It's pretty comfy, but it's uh, November 17th today and we're hunting one of the best places on earth right here. We've hunted it one other time so far this year. Um, and we're hoping the tray's still alive. We don't know for sure, but they just finally picked all the corn about a quarter mile from here. So all the corn's off the farm except for what I wanted to leave. So that could have moved some deer around a little bit. So kind of excited to see if any new bucks show up here. We got a few turkeys moving in, some nice toms already, so. It's early, like 1.45 or something like that, so we're in here plenty early.
beeline looks like. Keep her coming this way. Man, if isn't that isn't the most beautiful thing you ever saw right there. Oh my word. He's gorgeous. Look at the mass that dude's got. Chocolate antlers. Man, wasn't that the most awesome thing you ever seen coming right up through that snow? Gorgeous chocolate antlered. Whew. Gosh, he had all kinds of mass too. I know that buck, that's picket fence. And uh, if he's not old enough, he's not old enough. That's the rule, so. 15 yards, there he went. Primrose path, so. Still awesome to see him. Most of the team was hunting on the 17th. Jared Mills was on his river farm, once again looking for the big 10 pointer that only recently started showing up on his cameras. Caleb Byer spends that evening and the next morning looking for a buck named Nemo, despite not having any sightings of the buck since summer. Again, Caleb draws a blank. afternoon of November 18th, Caleb decides to play his whole card and heads in after the open country monster he calls Dakota. Caleb's choice for the afternoon is a redneck blind overlooking a patch of standing beans, the only standing food for miles in any direction. Caleb has kept this spot in mind for just this moment. Now with a fresh layer of snow, the bow owner hopes this high quality food source will draw in the giant. Well, it's November 18th this evening, and we're back in here hunting this buck I call Dakota. So basically, what we're hoping for is that um, Dakota's either with a doe, and she brings him to this standing bean plot, or he's off of a doe, and comes to this bean plot to check for does. Uh, it's also really cool today. We had snow dump in last night, so these deer could, you know, we seen a buck today that was literally out in the middle of a, of a crop field just eating, you know, a six and a half year old buck that we have some history with, and he was just eating. So all of the crops around us are picked and have cattle in them. So we definitely have the most desirable food source by far. You know, we just need this buck to cooperate. He could be a mile away right now looking for does this is wide open ground so you know we're hoping that the hinge cutting we did in the off season pays off for us tonight put a lot of work into this spot with a little luck and i need a lot of luck hopefully i can put something on the ground tonight no joke it's him are you filming just wait he might come right up here Probably not though, but if he gets over the hill, we just give him a rattle. We got nothing else to lose. Oh my gosh. Please do it, big boy. Okay. Please come this way. Oh, with nothing around us to even call, I mean. It's just completely open, I don't know. Small buck right been ahead of him. What do you do? Can you still see him? 
Yeah, he's just staying on the draw. He's running now. Good. Do you rattle? Yeah. I'm gonna try it. Yeah. Tip running in. Tip running in. He's just judgment I rattled to him too which was not smart but you know being the third time we've seen him we know he lives right here we've seen him three times within this little area so we just have to keep after him and hope that you know we're probably gonna give this spot a rest I it, it seeing him come out of there would tell you we need to do a hanging on in there but awesome awesome encounter nonetheless so Hopefully we can end the chapter to him soon. You know, we've only got probably 30 minutes left, I'd say. So before we get a bunch of deer in here, you know, does or small bucks or whatever, we're just gonna get out of here and drive out on the road and maybe try and lay eyes on him, just get an idea of where he's headed. He ran back into where we're hunting him. So I know we don't want to push him completely out of the area. He's living there. We just need to go back to risk versus reward and see. Awesome to see him again. I mean, deer's an absolute giant, but I would like it a lot more if we could catch up with him. That same evening, 190 miles to the east, Mike Reed is back in the now famous graveyard set, hoping for another encounter with his number one buck. Well, Dylan and I are all set up. We're back in the graveyard set after Curly. It is Sunday, November 18th, afternoon hunt. Um, on November 9th, I had uh, Curly come up behind us with a doe couldn't get a shot. And then yesterday morning we had him to our west with a doe. This is his core area. So I'm hoping tonight he's either alone and coming out to feed or check this spot for does or the doe he's with may come out and feed right here. our target buck, Curly. 
3 o'clock in the afternoon. We basically had just finished the interview. And he came about 30 yards inside the lane, just parallel in the lane through the thick stuff. And uh, when I did get a shot at him, it the camera couldn't see him, so he got by us. He's, he got a little bit of our wind, and he got a little nervous, and then the wind started blowing more southerly. And he saw some other deer, and he relaxed, and he walked off. So I'm hoping that he comes out in the beans, and maybe after a while, if he calms down, I could do a little call back in the brush here and see if he'll walk back this way. But another close encounter, that's a third encounter with that deer in uh, 10 days, 9 days, so... Eventually, it will work out. As expected, it was a great hunt, and that was a really close call on Curly. He ended up coming out in the beans around 4.10, hour and 10 minutes after we saw him the first time. Then he was uh, nudging some does around. They went back into the timber, came back out. I tried a little calling, but eventually she got in the timber and they uh, headed off to the east. I could see him in the timber about 200 yards in there, heading to my uh, other bean field. So. I gotta work the next few days, but we're gonna come back down here for Thanksgiving break, and uh, I'll have four days to hunt. I hope I can catch up with him then. As we rejoin Troy Saxonmeyer's hunt for driftwood, there have been some twists and turns in the trail. On the evening of November 17th, Troy missed the buck as he moved quickly past the bowhunter stand. As disappointing as that was, Troy knew the buck never figured out what happened and would be no wiser for the experience. Now we move forward to November 21st, as Troy sets up in a spot where he believes Driftwood will show up first after dropping his latest doe. Well, looks like they made a pass for the corn November 21st. And uh, it's gonna be go time here, we got I think we got him. We're gonna make a big move on Driftwood, drop a set, move a set, see what happens. Well, Cody and I just slipped back in here. Uh, we found a cedar tree over here, close to my food plot. It's actually about 70 yards from my redneck blind. And one encouraging thing that we found, we pulled the cameras last night and uh, Driftwood, the day after I shot at him, I was concerned about the type of scare that I gave him. The next morning, I got pictures of him coming back in here, right across this, um, from my sanctuary back to that doe bedding area. He was definitely after that doe. Thought process is he ended up with that doe. It's been 72 hours since uh, the last sighting. That's three days. So, hopefully he breaks loose off that doe. We are pretty confident now where he beds. He either beds right there, 
We're right over there. When I say right there, I'm talking 80 yards away. You know, nice and hidden in this, this cedar tree. And with that combine running, with all the noise, I, I feel like this is the night that it's going to happen. It's kind of late. It's almost 3 o'clock. It took us almost two hours to hang this set. We had a lot of trimming to do. We were just... Our thought process is a lot of the deer movement hasn't happened until after 3 o'clock. Just take our time, be as quiet as possible, and that's exactly what we did. So, I think Cody and I are going to have ourselves a day. Arrange that. <laughs> Give me some. Yes. I'm so <laughs> this is unbelievable. What just happened? Cody and I have been on. The, I've been on this deer. I was trying to talk to Cody before we even got out of the truck, and I said, I don't know how many sits I got. I got 15, 17, 20. I don't know. And I've never ever ever hunted right here on the farm on this hillside i have a my redneck blind 70 yards away and i have a huge food plot that i always put in up here and i know from shed hunting this farm there's a monster trail right here walks right out at 22 yards and we're watching him bed it down and where it used to be my food plot i think i just laid his head down but we're gonna have to review the shot i might be back just a touch but with him quartered slightly away i think he's gonna be a dead deer We're gonna see if uh, we can get our hands on him. He bedded down right away, and then about 20 minutes later, we heard a pretty big crash. I think he tumbled down the hill. So I think this is the moment I've been waiting for. So we're gonna go over and check him out. Got him? Oh my gosh. You know, I just, I mean, he's a real cool deer. I'm gonna get my hands on him. Finally put my hands on him. Honestly, don't know what to say. I, this has just been a long season for me. And I mean, you take vacation for this stuff and you, and I mean, you come out here every single day and I've been hunting the same animal every single day. And the respect you start to get for these animals is unbelievable. And I, I can't, uh, obviously I'm just very grateful to live in the state of Iowa and have the opportunity to chase these things. You know, this is what uh, November's all about. 
this quest started out i think i sat once in mid october and i had a ton of daylight movement on this deer probably more than any other buck that i ever wanted to chase yeah. definitely think that this deer was a kind of a carbon copy story in my life and something i'm going to remember forever and i'm definitely very thankful for cody he's back from college and he put the commitment in to help me and now we get an opportunity to go out and help him try to film a film a deer so for everybody at home thanks for watching i couldn't be any happier and, and just uh more more blessed than the opportunity i'm handed every day Troy wasn't the only one hunting on the evening of November 21st. Caleb and Taylor Byers were again hunting the farm where they had hoped to find the ghost-like buck named Nemo. Instead, they encounter a great eight-pointer that Caleb would have gladly shot if the buck had only cooperated and come within bow range. Mike Reed and Caleb Byers keep getting close to mature bucks, just not close enough. Jared Mills and Brad Beaver are buying time until Brad has his precious Iowa tag, but with only a few days left in the month. Will there be enough time to fill it? Owen is losing hope of finding back the huge typical he missed 10 days earlier. And I am finally regaining the urge to hunt. The drama continues to build as the second peak of the rut is upon us. In many states, bow hunters never realize that buck movement peaks twice in November. Once around the 7th or 8th, and again around the 22nd or 23rd, as the number of does and esters continues to decline rapidly. Hunters don't see this because the behavior is swamped by human activity in the form of the general firearm season. We see it here in Iowa though, where the entire month of November is bow only. Granted, the second peak is nowhere near as intense as the first one, but it is significant enough to produce some of the best mature buck action of the season. I've seen it several times, we all have. Now we have one last chance to grab the gold ring. Just 10 more days of chasing November.